Hey everybody, my name is Ryan and here at eTrailer we install, test fit and review a lot of different parts. That way we could try to answer any questions that those of you might have. And that's exactly what we're doing here today on our 2018 Kia Sorento. We're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Red Arc Tow Pro Liberty. We're going to be installing that in conjunction with the Red Arc Universal Adapter Harness as well as the ETBC7 kit. So we get these Serenos in the shop quite often and believe it or not, people seem to do a little bit of everything with these. They're pretty capable vehicles and that does include towing trailers that have brakes. And if that's what you wanna do, you're gonna need a brake controller to help slow you down and keep things safe. And that's where this Red Arc is gonna come into play. Now, I will say I'm a big fan of these and that's more or less because of the size of them very small this is all you're going to see so it's not going to really take away from the looks of your kia's interior but at the same time you're not going to have to sacrifice usability they're still pretty easy to use and figure out and honestly in today's newer cars anyway you don't have a ton of space in here this ain't like the old days where you had the big pickup trucks and a ton of room that's just not the case now and so with a traditional style brake controller, they're really large and kind of hang down and bulky. They always seem to kind of be in the way. That's the issue the Red Arc is gonna solve. It's gonna be super easy to get to, look good, and not take up a bunch of space. So this brake controller is going to allow you to pull a trailer with brakes up to two axles, which honestly is perfect for the Kia. Chances are pretty good. You're never gonna pull anything larger than that anyway and it's also going to be self calibrating so once you kind of drive around town as you normally would the thing will calibrate and it's going to be one less thing you're not going to have to worry about setting up it usually gets it pretty close to where you want to be so you can hook up your trailer hit the road you're not going to have to mess around if you don't want to it's also going to be proportional so what that means is the harder you apply the brakes in your kia the harder it's gonna apply the trailer brake. So just to kind of give you an example of that, say if you're maybe coming up to a red light or something and you're about halfway on the brakes, trailer's gonna do the same thing. On the other hand, say if you're maybe on the highway, there's an accident up ahead, something like that, and you really gotta stand on them brakes, the trailer's gonna do the same thing. So it's gonna make your braking uh, experience just a lot smoother and much more predictable. So this is also gonna have a manual override, which means if you just simply push down on it, it's gonna apply just a trailer brake. So that'll work good in say, maybe a sway situation. If your trailer's kind of getting squirrely on you, you can hit that, it'll straighten it back out and keep you good to go. And honestly, it don't seem like a big deal, but in a situation when you're ready to use that, it's good just to have the button you can push and not think about it. A lot of the other brake controllers have a Kind of a lever you have to kind of get your finger in there and slide and it's a little bit cumbersome that's not the case with this one so in an emergency situation like that you're going to have a little more peace of mind knowing you can just push this button and not have to fiddle around with some lever or anything like that now even though this does self calibrate you can adjust the braking force so if you rotate the knob it goes from zero which is at now all the way up to 10. And so what that's going to do, say, if you have a really light load, you know, maybe putting it at a two or three might be a good spot. You don't need a ton of braking power carrying something light. On the other hand, say if you got something much heavier than you're used to carrying or pulling, rather, you might start it at eight, nine, or ten. And that's just going to help kind of uh, increase that braking force to help slow you down. Kind of a good rule of thumb. I like to start in the middle, regardless of what trailer you're pulling, you know, maybe a five or six, and go from there. If you feel like the braking power isn't enough, you can always turn it up. Or if you feel like it's too much, you can always just turn it down and really find that sweet spot and fine tune it to your liking. And one thing that I do find pretty neat is what's called the park brake feature. So what's gonna happen is, say if you're at a stoplight, and you're on the brakes, after a few seconds, the brake controller will realize, hey, I don't really need to be applying the trailer brakes to keep our vehicle stationary. It'll figure that out. And if that's the case, it'll release your trailer brakes. So 
I think that's pretty good. If you're sitting there, you don't need to be on your trailer brakes. Um, it's not going to be. So at the end of the day, that's just really going to help um, maintain uh, your trailer brakes better. You're not going to have as much wear and tear on them, and you're not going to have to put them through the ringer for no reason. I think if I had a Sorento and needed a brake controller, I would really look good into this one. And what really does it for me is just the ease of use, the self-calibrating. You don't have to put much thought into it. And just the overall size and the clean look that we get once it's installed. Now, speaking of the installation, actually hooking the brake controller up itself is relatively straightforward and simple. The time consuming part is running all your wiring and getting all that done. It does take some time. It's really not too difficult. It's just more or less kind of tedious, if that makes sense. But as long as you stay patient, you should have no problem getting it done at home in your garage or maybe even in the driveway. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and hook everything up together now. To begin our installation, we're going to be here at the back of our Sereno. And the first thing we need to do is mount up our seven way plug. So it is going to come included with this bracket. You may need to grab an extra bracket if you want to mount it like we have it here. I just used a no drill long bracket to accomplish that. You can find many others here at each trailer. What we're going to do just slide everything through. Kind of try to push it up and over our hitch here out of the way. And pretty straightforward from here. We're just going to take the included hardware and secure it to our bracket there. I like to get all four of them started and then I can come back and snug them all down once I have that done. So now what we can do is take our four pole end here coming from our seven way plug and that's going to need to get plugged into our existing four pole wiring so before we do that what i like to do and what i suggest doing is using some dielectric grease and just putting it on those terminals with this being outside all the time this will really help keep these terminals protected against corrosion and things like that if you don't have any at home, you can grab it here at each trailer. So we'll get that coated real good. And that's pretty straightforward. It's just gonna plug into each other. And then what I like to do just to make a kind of a semi-permanent connection is just take a zip tie, kind of wrap it around the two plugs there and run it down. That way we don't have to worry about it coming loose over time or anything like that. Or if we ever do need to take it apart, all we're going to have to do is cut the zip tie. Now what we can do is just kind of clean up our wiring a little bit, get this yellow one out of the way. And I say that because we're not going to be using this yellow wire. This is for a reverse light circuit. And typically you want to need to hook this up unless you were uh, maybe pulling a larger boat trailer or something like that. So our customer isn't. So that's what we're going to do is kind of clean it up. I'm just going to take a piece of tape and just tape it. I won't cut it off completely or anything like that. That way in the future, if you do want to hook it up, you got it and you can. With that being said, we'll just get this all taped up out of the way. That way we have a little easier of a time getting the rest of our wires hooked up. Now what we're able to do is take this white wire here with the pre-attached ring terminal and that's going to be a ground so we're going to need to secure it to the body of our vehicle. Now what I went ahead and, and did is just lowered our spare tire out of the way, makes it a lot easier to get to and we're going to secure the wire using the provided self-tapping screw right here on this metal flange. Now what we can do is take our duplex wiring, this bundle here uh, that's in this gray sheath. Underneath the sheath, you're going to have two separate wires. So you can strip them back. So you're just going to peel off that insulation, 
maybe like a quarter inch, something like that on both those wires. And these are gonna get connected to these two wires here from our seven way. Now I did put on heat shrink buck connectors. Um, the ones that come pre-attached and included will work just fine. However, the heat shrinks do offer a little more protection because we can seal up the ends. Uh, if you'd rather use those, you can grab them here at e-trailer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the black wire and connect that to the black wire from our seven way. So that'll go into the end of the buck connector and you'll just crimp it down and that'll connect those two wires together. And we're gonna do the same thing for this white wire. That one's gonna get plugged into the blue side there. So once I have these crimped down, I can come back with my heat source and seal up the ends. So what I went ahead and did was just kind of bundle up all of our wiring here and zip tied it up and out of the way to help clean up our install look. And then from there, I actually routed our wiring here from the back up to the front of our vehicle. And this is a path that I took. Just ran it along through here. And I just used some zip ties along the way to keep it secure and up and over our subframe. And when you do this, do your best to avoid any hot and moving parts as well. It comes down right through here. And just runs along through here. At this point, I started following some of our factory brake lines and things like that. You may have a shield, a plastic shield here that covers all this. So you might need to take it off if that's the case. You can usually just take off a few 10 millimeter nuts and that'll drop down, make it a lot easier to see. But so I just continued on along through here and we're gonna need to run this up into the engine compartment. And what I've done is just used a pole wire. So this is a piece of tubing, but you can use a coat hanger or something like that. Drop it down from the top side, tape your wiring to it and then you're going to be able to go up top and easily pull on your wire and bring our electrical wiring right where we need it to be. So underneath the hood here in the engine compartment, this is where our wiring came up. About right there, I removed that gray sheathing. That way we can work with our two wires independently. We'll let that hang out for a second and we can move on to our breakers, which are these right here. We need to secure these down. Right here along this ledge is a good spot to secure them. It's out of the way. We're not gonna have any contact with our hood when we close it or anything like that. You're gonna have a 40 amp breaker, which is this one here, and a 20 amp breaker, which is this one right here. So I'm just gonna use the provided self-tapping screws to secure these down. To hook our wiring up to the breakers, what we're going to do is first take the black wire that goes back to our seven way. This is going to get connected to the silver post here on our 40 amp breaker. So I just kind of eyeballed the length. We're going to trim it to length, strip back that insulation. Then we're going to take a small ring terminal, slide that over. Crimp it on, remove this nut, and slide that onto the post there, and reinstall the nut. So now what I've done is that black wire that we trimmed off, I took it and made two pieces like this. So each wire I crimped on a small ring terminal on one end 
and on the other end of the wire I crimped on the larger ring terminals and what we're going to do is the larger ring terminals are going to go to the positive side of our battery and the smaller ones are going to get hooked up to one side of our breaker so we'll start with our 40 amp breaker here that'll go on the gold post get that nut started and then the other wire that we made the, again the small end will go on this 20 amp breakers gold post as well so once you have that on there i'll grab that nut that fell down there in a moment but for now i'll just steal this side off and get this one going so once we have both of them started come back and snug them down. Now, as I mentioned, these larger ring terminal ends are going to get hooked up to the positive battery terminal. So you're going to open up this cover and we're going to use this nut right here. It's a 10 millimeter. And what I've done is just took a pair of snips and kind of clipped away some of this plastic here. That way we could get our wires in there. That being said, we'll grab our socket. Get this nut removed. And actually this is one that isn't completely designed to be um, all the way removed or at least easily. So instead of fighting with that, what I'm gonna do is just trim small openings in our ring terminal here. Just cut a little section out of each one. And then we should be able to kind of sneak them in around the stud and underneath the nut there. And that'll be just fine. That'll give us a good connection point without too much trouble. Once you have them pushed in there, Go ahead and tighten that nut back down. Now what we can do is you're gonna to wanna to cut off maybe about four to five foot off the end of our white wire. And one end of it, we're gonna leave plain for now. The other side, we're gonna take the large ring terminal, crimp it on and cut it just like we did on the wires that went to the positive side of the battery. So we made that little opening. And this is gonna get connected to the negative side of our battery or the ground side, which is right here. So we'll take this cover off. This just lifts up. And more or less the same deal. We'll grab our 10 millimeter socket. Loosen up that nut, put our ring terminal into position and then just tighten this nut back down and take our cap put that back on and then what we can do we're just kind of getting everything ready here to run inside of our vehicle we're going to take maybe about four foot of black wire one end crimp on that small ring terminal. The other end, we're gonna leave plain again. However, once we hook this up to our breaker, this wire um, could have power to it. So I do suggest putting some tape or something there over the end of it, just so we don't bump into metal and potentially create a spark or anything like that. And just like all the others, this will simply go over that stud, take our nut, and tighten that back down as well. Now once this is tight, we can go inside of the vehicle under the dash and drill a hole. That way we can run some of our wiring inside. So here we are on the driver's side underneath the dash. And I went ahead and drilled a hole through the firewall. That way we could run our wires through there. It's right up under here, kind of on this left hand side, kind of up towards the center. So here's where that hole is that I created. All I did is just used uh, some snips to kind of cut this carpet back. And I chose right here because it's easy to get to and in the open, we didn't have to worry about drilling into anything. 
You still want to be careful while you're doing it though, really double check, but just used a half inch drill bit to create the hole. And then I used a snap bushing to pop in there. That way we don't have to worry about our wires kind of hitting that bare metal. You can find these snap bushings here at each trailer. And so once I had that hold on, I just used another pole wire. Again, this is just tubing. You can use a coat hanger or something like that though too. Push it through there into the engine compartment. And we can go under the hood, tape our three wires that we need to pull inside to our fish wire. We'll be able to pull that, feed them in where we can finish getting everything hooked up. Now we can prepare our universal pigtail harness. That way we can get it all hooked up. Now this doesn't come with your brake controller, but you can grab it right here at each trailer. The ends here are pre-stripped. However, I do kind of fold them back and double them up. That way they'll fit into our included buck connectors better. Now, since all these will be inside, I'm not gonna use the heat shrinks. I'm just gonna use the ones that come with the kit. And that's because we don't have to worry about moisture or anything like that. So I'll just slide it over the ends and crimp it down. Now I wanna mention, we're only going to be doing this for the white, blue, and black wire. We're not gonna be putting one on the end of the red wire. That'll get hooked up to something different, so we can worry about that here in a little bit. So now we can hook up our three wires from our ETBC7 kit to our brake controller uh, adapter harness. So we'll first start with the black wire here. This will be the power wire. So we'll strip that back. Careful not to let this touch anything because it is hot. So we'll just plug that into the uh, buck connector that goes to the black wire from our harness. That'll get plugged in. We'll crimp it down. And we'll do the same thing for these other two wires. So this one here comes from the negative battery terminal. So that'll get hooked up to the ground side of our harness, which will be the white wire. And then this one here goes back to our seven way. And this is the electric brake output signal wire. So that will get connected to the blue wire from our harness. So now what we need to do is locate our brake switch signal wire. So more or less, we're looking for the wire coming off of our brake switch that only has power whenever you depress the brake. The brake switch itself, where the wires are gonna be, are gonna be right along our brake pedal arm, just up underneath the dash zone. So looking up at our brake switch, you can see there's four wires that come off of it. And you can peel back some of the tape that's covering up from the factory. That way you can test them. And as I mentioned, we're looking for power only when the brake pedal is pushed down. So I used a test light tapped in each wire to find that signal. And the one that we're gonna be working with is the green wire with a orange stripe. That's the one that we're gonna need to tap into. So to tap into that wire, we're gonna be using a quick connect like this. Now it's gonna be really tough to see um, or to show you as I'm doing this. So I figured I'd give you kind of a demonstration on how these work out here. Then I can hook it up and show you what it looks like once it's done. So the way it's gonna work is this side here that is closed. We're gonna take our red wire from our brake controller adapter. That'll get pushed into there. And then you can see there's kind of an opening or a split there. And let's just pretend this is the brake switch wire that we're working with. We're gonna kind of fold that in like so, close that, and then you're gonna take a pair of pliers and squeeze down on this piece of metal here, and that'll connect the two together. Once that's squeezed down, you can take the cap and just close it up. So I'll go ahead and do that now and show you how it turned out. And this is how it turned out. Now we can find a spot to mount up our brake controller switch. Uh, you can put these in a lot of places. What I like to do on these vehicles is actually just put them on this fuse panel door. So you can pop that off and 
it gives us enough wire to where we can still drop this down, get into our fuse block if we need to. And in the future, if you ever want to get rid of the vehicle or anything like that, you can simply just put a new door in there and not have a hole in your dash permanently. So it's really convenient. So what I'm gonna do is flip it over and mark where we need to drill. So I like to go about in the center there. And what I'm gonna do is take this piece of plastic here and use it as a template. So I'm going to lay it where I want it. Take my ink pen, mark a hole, and one in that small hole too. We can grab our drill and large rows, and then we're gonna be able to mount up our switch. So once you have that hole drilled out, or holes rather, this is how it's gonna look. We can take our switch on the back side, kind of line that up. We're gonna take this piece and line that up as well. This can be a little tedious, so just take your time, get everything lined up. Once we have that in two position, you take this little chrome piece, put that in there like so. We'll get it started. Hold down, make sure it's drawing everything together nice and evenly. This can be a little tricky, a lot of small parts. So if you feel like it's not starting the way you want, be sure to kind of reset it. You don't want to cross thread this or anything like that. Once you do get it started, you can use a 12 millimeter socket and snug this down. You just want to do it by hand. You don't need to get a wrench or anything like that on there. Just want to make sure it's hand tight more or less. And from there, we can grab our knob and pop that on. So what you want to do is make sure that this dial is turned all the way to the left as far as you can go. Then you're going to take your knob and the number zero, you're going to want to face up. So towards this little um, part there that sticks out. So we'll take our knob and this simply just pushes right onto place. So now we can grab the cable and I'm going to take the end that kind of has that 90 degree bend. That's just going to plug right into our switch here on our panel. Take the other end of our plug. And feed it through this opening here. Then we can simply just kind of pop our panel right back how we originally had it. Now what we can do is get ready to mount up our brake controller itself. Now, I'm just gonna use some two-sided tape here. Uh, it doesn't come with it, but this is the method that I'm gonna use. You could also maybe use some self-tapping screws or something like that, but in the past, this has worked out real well for me. Now, before I mount it, since it will be up under the dash and it's kind of tight and a little tricky to get to, I think it's a good idea to plug everything in before we actually mount it. That way, everything's done already. So. One end of the brake controller is just gonna get plugged into this cable here that goes to the switch that we mounted. So pretty straightforward, just snaps right in. And the other portion of the brake controller will get plugged into our adapter harness here. So what I'll do is go ahead, uh, get this secured and I'll show you what it looks like once I have it in place. So here's where our box is mounted. It's on this black box that's from the factory, kind of just above our brake pedal arm. It's a really nice flat surface that you can stick it right to. It's out of the way and should work out real well. So now that we have everything hooked up, it's a good idea to test our brake controller to make sure it's functioning properly. So what you're gonna wanna do is plug into your trailer and you should see a light illuminate on our knob here. You can see it's going from green to blue. And the reason uh, that it's flashing like that is it's trying to learn its calibration. So this will calibrate on its own. All you're gonna have to do is drive around town like you normally would with or without your trailer. 
And after about 20 uh, breaking applications, it should go to a solid blue color. That means it's calibrated. But with that being said, one way we can test it to make sure it's actually uh, sending a uh, break output back is just to use a manual override. So I'll turn our knob up to, we'll just go to 10 and you're gonna push down on it. And that should send the signal back. So we'll go ahead and check our tester and make sure that it is indeed sending that back. That way we know it's functioning as it should. So I'll go ahead, hit the manual override and make sure our signal is being sent back. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Red Arc Toe Pro Liberty on our 2018 Kia Sorento.